Good day, it's Constantine. Today we have a look at some drum overhead techniques. We'll demonstrate a few techniques, both mono and stereo. Uh, each one is different and has a different sonic quality to it. So do not learn just one technique and always use that because it will not, it might not work on everything. You need to know a few. And it's important to get a good overhead sound because sometimes the overheads are 50% of your drum sound. Now a few things that, if you, especially if you're starting out, that you need to pay attention to. The first one is phase. Uh, just record something, check the phase, and see if you need to make any adjustments. And the second one is, and that could be a matter of personal preference, is perspective. You can, there are two ways of going about it. Either record audience perspective or musician's perspective. I always do audience perspective because when I listen to music, I like to feel like I'm part of the audience. Now let's start with some stereo techniques first. Okay, coincident pair, X, Y. Let's use, this, use the ships to demonstrate this technique. Uh, the way you set it up is you bring the mics, the capsules, as close as you can without touching. And you have an angle of 90 degrees. The good thing about this technique is that it translates almost perfectly to mono because the capsules are so close together. Now here I am using the KM84 because they have the attenuation pad. And again, audience perspective. The height, it depends. I always start with uh, the height, it's high enough to cover the entire kit. And there are two ways of going about it. You either center the snare or the kick. The way you look at it is you draw an imaginary line from where the mics meet and you go all the way down. In our case, we are centering the kit. We'll record both, but I doubt you'll you hear much of a difference. Okay, let's have a listen. Okay, now for this one, we're just going to move the overheads over the snare. Okay, so now the snare is centered. Okay, just so you know how it sounds like, I'm going to bring the mics down a bit lower. Uh, around there. Again, I have the, the, the snare drum as my center. And let's have a listen at this one. Okay, for this one, let's take them all the way up. That's as far as this stand will go, over the snare again. Um, after a certain level, after a certain height, it will just start sounding mono again. So you're going to lose that uh, stereo spread that you want. So play around with it. This is exaggerated. I would never use that. Um, but just have a listen, see if it sounds right or not. If it doesn't, just bring them down again. Again, this is exaggerated, but let's see how this sounds. Okay, ORTF, let's use the ships again to demonstrate this technique. The good thing about this technique is that it does both volume difference and time difference. 
If you're a bit confused about the terms, I have a video where I go into detail about all of these. Now, the way you set this one up is the mics have an angle, a mutual angle of 110 degrees, and they are exactly 17 centimeters apart. Now, if you have a stereo bar like this one, it's easier to set up because this one is exactly 17 centimeters by design to help you set this technique up. So again, 110 degrees, 17 centimeter apart. And with the KMI84, uh, again, audience perspective, and the height as the XY, it depends, go higher or lower, but it's high enough to at least cover the entire kit. Okay, let's go a bit lower, uh, about there, and I forgot to mention that I have centered my snare for this one. Uh, we'll try the kick as well so you know what it sounds like, but let's have a listen at this one first. Okay, for this one, let's exaggerate it. Let's go all the way up. There you go, over snare. And you'll see that like before in the XY, it starts to lose its stereo image. So it starts to sound mono. Okay, this is way, way too much. I would never do this, but let's have a listen and see how it sounds all the way up there. Okay, now let's move the mics so that the kick is the center of our overheads. Uh, draw an imaginary line from the center, exactly where the mics meet, all the way down and make that your center. So, spaced pair. Now another stereo technique, which is basically just one mic at each side of the kit. Uh, now there are many variations of this one, you can just come in close and point them outwards. You can have this one at each side of the kit pointing down, or another one is to angle them and just point at the snare. Now, to avoid phase issues, you have to make sure they are equal distance for either the snare or the kick, whatever your center is. As always, I forgot my tape measure, but you can use an XLR. So from the center of the snare, we measure this mic and then all the way here at this one. So they are equal distance from the snare. Okay, the exact same thing, but this time, instead of the mics pointing straight down, they're pointing to the center of the snare. Okay, spaced pair again. Let's move them closer. This is going to give us more of uh, the symbols.
Now for this one, we've raised the mics as high as the stand will go. And you'll see in spaced pair, uh, it is a bit more forgiving than ORTF and XY, where you lose some of that stereo image. This one is a bit more forgiving. As before, same distance from the snare. Yes, and yes, let's have a listen. Okay, recording man, which is based on Glyn Jones. Now the difference between these two is that the recording man takes under consideration the phase. So the first mic is placed directly above the snare and the starting point, and which is, this is the one we're going to try first, is two drumsticks above the snare. And then the exact same distance, so over snare we put the second mic over shoulder. Now the stereo immense is not as great as spaced pair or you know or ORTF, but if that's what you can afford to do, just go for it. Let's have a listen. For this one, we do the exact same thing as before, but this time our height is two and a half drumsticks instead of one. Um, forgot to mention that this mic here can either point the center of the snare, the center of the drum kick, or somewhere in between. So play around with it because the sound changes a bit. Now another thing, everything I've recorded so far, I usually just, just for convenience, just do a stereo track. But this does hard panning, hard left and hard right. With these ones, I'm doing um, two mono tracks because I don't want to pump them hard left and hard right. I usually go a bit less. So if you want to have uh, a go with it, just try it like that and play around with the panning. <laughs> 